Hey traders, Gavin McMaster here from Options Trading IQ doing a video collaboration with Bar Chart. And today we're going to be looking at gamma levels in Bar Chart Excel. Before we do, just a quick reminder that everything discussed is for educational purposes only, is general in nature, and does not take into account your personal circumstances. So since the COVID-19 pandemic, the option market has seen an exponential increase in trading volumes. This surge has brought gamma levels into the spotlight, revealing them as a hidden force driving market movements. In this video, we'll break down what gamma levels are, why they matter, and how they influence market liquidity and volatility. You'll also learn how to use Bar Chart Excel to find and analyze gamma levels. Gamma is a measure of how much an option's delta changes with a $1 move in the underlying stock price. Think of delta as the speed at which the option's price changes, while gamma represents the acceleration of that change. For example, if an option has a delta of 0.5 and a gamma of 0.1, a $1 increase in the underlying stock price would increase the delta from 0.5 to 0.6. Long options have positive gamma and short options have negative gamma. Positive gamma positions benefit from a large price moves while negative gamma positions benefit from small price moves. Gamma levels refer to specific price levels in the market where there is significant positive or negative gamma based on market positioning and open interest. These levels are important because they can indicate where significant trading activity and hedging will occur, influencing price movements. Market makers provide liquidity by being ready to buy or sell options at any time. However, this role exposes them to various risks, including gamma exposure. To manage their risk, market makers engage in delta hedging. Delta hedging involves buying or selling the underlying asset to offset the changes in delta caused by price movements. This helps them maintain a neutral market position, minimizing their exposure to directional risk. The interaction between delta exposure, sometimes called DEX, and gamma exposure, called GEX, is critical. While GEX helps gauge market volatility, DEX is more about liquidity and direction. When market makers have positive gamma, they need to buy when the stock drops and sell when the stock rallies to hedge their delta, which stabilizes the price. Conversely, when they are short gamma, they sell low and buy high, which can amplify price movements and increase volatility. So if you think about that, when they're short gamma and the stocks are dropping, they're continuing to have to sell the stock. So it amplifies the price move on the downside. The same thing goes on the upside. If the stock is rallying and they've got short gamma, they have to continually buy the stock at higher and higher prices to neutralize their exposure. So that's where we get the term gamma squeeze from. Now that you understand a bit about gamma levels and how it can impact stock price movements, let's take a look at how we can view and analyze gamma levels in Bar Chart Excel. Okay, so within our Excel, we'll go over to Bar Chart, we'll go to Volatility, and let's take a look at SPY first. Double click to bring that across and we'll choose gamma levels. We can look at all expirations, or in this example, I'm just gonna look at the regular monthly expiration for June. And I'm just going to switch to total gamma as well. I prefer to view uh, the total rather than the call and put together. And I'll just hit insert to bring in the data. Now I like to expand the graph here so I can see it a little bit better. And we can see there's quite a lot of positive gamma above where the underlying is currently trading. So one of the other things I like to do is just to sum up all of the gamma as well. And we can see here around 208 million in positive gamma. So a lot of positive gamma at the moment. And if you remember when dealers, market makers are long gamma, they're gonna to have to buy the dip and sell the rally. So that's gonna actually compress volatility. If we had overall negative gamma or short gamma, it would be the opposite where dealers are having to sell on the dips and buy on the rallies. So in this environment, a lot of positive gamma overall we're going to see probably compressed volatility um, going forward. The other thing I like to do is to just clean up the chart a little bit. We don't need a lot of this data at the bottom here. We're not overly interested in it and some of this data at the top as well. So 
I'm kind of just going to remove everything above about 560 and anything below um, about 505 because everything is just minimal and a bit too far out of the money to really make any difference. Now, once we do that, our last price indicator um, adjusts a little bit, but we can see the last price here was 535. So around here, and we just get a better view now of where all the different gamma levels are. And as you'd expect, there's a lot of gamma here at 540 and 545. So to me, there's a couple of things that could happen here. Price may uh, gravitate towards that 540 level. And given that there's a lot of positive gamma there, dealers are going to have to start selling the underlying when it gets to that level. So we could see um, a bit of resistance at that 540 level. Similar, if we do manage to get up to 545, we're going to see a fair bit of resistance there because there's so much positive gamma. And remember, when there's positive gamma, they have to sell the rallies. And that's another reason why you can sometimes see, um, particularly with indexes like the SPY, price gravitates to those round numbers of 540, 545, those five-point strikes. And there's usually quite a lot of liquidity there, quite a lot of gamma as well. So they can provide um, resistance when price gets there. They could also gravitate towards that level. Um, and if you think about the max pain as well, sometimes dealers are trying to pin the, the, the stock or the underlying uh, ETF around that strike where there's a lot of gamma. Let's look at another example, this time an individual stock. And we'll take a look at Apple. Let's leave all expirations this time and we'll just compare. Um, I'll do total gamma again. And we'll expand that out. So we can see huge amounts of positive gamma here in Apple, both, both above the market and below the market. So that's going to be a lot of volatility compression going on in Apple. You know, maybe that could be a good time to look at an iron condor on Apple if we think volatility is going to remain compressed or um, subdued because of this positive gamma. And again, we're seeing a lot of gamma at around the, the strikes 200, 220, 215, 210. Um, a lot of gamma around those five-point strikes. Just move that out of the way. Again, we'll just go and sum up our total gamma. And this might be something you'd like to keep an eye on um, once a week, every few days. That's a huge amount of positive gamma there in Apple. So again, that's going to indicate that volatility is going to remain pretty subdued in this stock. So that's a number that you might want to just kind of track and see how that develops over time. Um, and if that flips from positive to negative, that's when we could see a real uh, uptick in volatility in that underlying. Let's take a look at one last example. Everybody's favorite stock, NVIDIA. Now we may see a little bit of noise here because of the stock split. Bring that over, we'll look at total gamma. So just like Apple, we're seeing huge amounts of positive gamma here, not a lot of negative gamma at all. And if we sum up everything here, you can see huge amount of positive gamma. So that's likely to keep volatility fairly well compressed in the short term for NVIDIA. And we could always clean up this chart and look at where the exact gamma is. There's quite a lot just below the market um, and above where the stock's trading as well up at 125. So again, that 125 price could provide significant resistance because there's a lot of positive gamma at that level. So in conclusion, understanding gamma levels is a handy tool for navigating the options market more effectively. From the basics of gamma and delta to the intricate role of market makers and their delta hedging strategies, knowing how these elements interact can give you a significant trading edge. And with the help of Bar Chart Excel, you can quickly and easily view those gamma levels and see what's going on under the surface with each underlying stock or ETF. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.